Greetings, welcome to Dungeons and Gerbs. I'm Enraged Eggplant, and in this video I will tell you how you can make D&D style familiars in a Gerbs game. Remember the familiar, the class feature of such classes as Wizard, Sorcerer and Hexblade, that players usually trade it away for an alternative class feature? Yeah, that one. On one hand, I have always loved the familiars as a concept, but on the other hand, they didn't work that well in D&D. The bonuses they provided were quite minor, and you were punished quite severely for losing the familiar, and that could be very easy when 20 d6 fireballs are being flung around. And it also added some bookkeeping, as you had to actually take care of the familiar. From the role-playing standpoint, it wasn't even clear who is controlling and role-playing the familiar, the player or the GM, so most players just didn't bother. What about GURPS? How does GURPS do the familiars? The familiar itself is an ally, as described in the basic set. The book suggests using normal frequency of appearance values and modifiers for the advantage – minion, summonable, unwilling, sympathy. The special abilities enhancement is only required if the familiar provides you with the abilities. Such abilities are purchased as normal, but take the granted by familiar minus 40% limitation. That's a huge limitation. If I were to imitate D&D, I would not use the frequency of appearance, but instead make the ally constantly available. I wouldn't use summonable, minion or unwilling and I would be very careful with sympathy. After all, in D&D your familiar is always with you. In any case, the familiar is an NPC that is controlled by the GM and, as all allies, is built by the GM. Typically, a familiar is an animal with IQ raised at 2 at least 6, possibly to 10 or higher, and sometimes with both of cannot speak. But let's take a look at another book. Gerb's Dungeon Fantasy V – Allies. This one has an entire chapter devoted to familiars. It suggests familiars being built on 25% of the master's point value, hence them constantly available, but also summonable. Dungeon Fantasy familiars have a life bond with their masters, so the ally advantage has the sympathy – minus 25% limitation. The book also allows for some adjustments, such as making the familiar non summonable If you think that 25% is too much, you can take a look at page 14 of GURPS Dungeon Fantasy IX – Summoners. There is a box with point costs for weaker allies. If I recall things correctly, this box also exists in GURPS Zombies, but don't quote me on that. Dungeon Fantasy V also suggests that both the master and the familiar should have the special rapport advantage with regards to each other. I think that's a very good idea. It also forces the master to take energy reserve equal to half the familiar's FP, with the drains familiar minus 50% limitation. It's a nice ability, but I wouldn't force the characters to take it. What about granted abilities? They are still taken with a granted by familiar, minus 40% limitation. The familiar must be nearby to grant these abilities. Nearby means that it must be able to reach the master in a minute or less. For a familiar with move 5, this is 300 yards. Also, the familiar does not grant any abilities when it is stunned, unconscious, dead, or just unwilling to grant the abilities in question for some reason be it mind control or mundane persuasion. Perhaps another character's familiar is trying to sabotage this character. This book provides examples of granted abilities for each type of a familiar. What about the familiars themselves? The very same book has many animal templates modified to work as familiars. It also has a meta trait that includes appropriate advantages and disadvantages for the familiars. And I have no complaints about that one. There's also a telepathic variant of the meta trait. Finally, on page 24, there's a box with two abilities for the masters – shared sight and shared thoughts. Basically, thoughts allow the master to see through the familiar's eyes and communicate with the familiar telepathically, respectively. 
Shared sight, I think, has a mistake. Long range is not necessary on the mind reading advantage, because with mind link you succeed automatically. If you remove it, the ability becomes 9 points cheaper. While Dungeon Fantasy V Allies has many animal templates for the familiars, the templates are somewhat cinematic, as would be expected of a Dungeon Fantasy book. If you'd like more realism for animals, consider using animals from Gerup's Animalia, the link is in the description. But that's still not all Gerup's has about familiars. If you find this concept interesting, I highly recommend you get Pyramid 375. An excellent article about familiars there not only expands your options, provides write-ups for new abilities for both masters and familiars, but also has some new modifiers for advantages that cannot be found anywhere else. For example, the ability to treat your familiar as an extension of your body for the purpose of abilities, absorption of hostile spells, etc. One extra nice thing is the deconstructed granted by familiar limitation. Now you can adjust its value depending on the familiar's durability, visibility, and the required distance between the master and the familiar. This is very important for exotic familiars, such as spirits, outsiders, undead creatures, constructs, etc. As was said before, the familiar is a typical feature of spellcasters, but what about psionic characters? In D&D, psions used to have sea crystals that serve the same purpose. I have a write-up on my blog that I will link in the description. There's not much to talk about it. It's just a list of examples that emulate what you would see in D&D. If you'd like to read some more on psionic familiars, there's the Edge of Science article in Pyramid 329. In terms of mechanics, that's all. But I can point you to three other books that are full of material that you can adapt to use in GURPS and non-mechanical information that will be very useful. The first book is Familiar Folio for Pathfinder RPG. This one can give you many ideas on what kind of familiars you can get, what bonuses they might provide, unique abilities, spells and magic items. The second one is a D&D 3.0 third-party supplement with an incredibly long title Encyclopedia Arcane, Familiars, Crouching Monkey, Hidden Toad. This one explores the bond between the master and the familiar in more detail, and can give you many ideas on how to incorporate familiars in your game. What I find fascinating about this book is that it has a certain piece of advice that you won't find in other books, and that even GURPS disregards. Do not give masters any of the familiar's extraordinary, spell-like or supernatural abilities, simply because the familiar becomes less useful to the master if the master can replicate the abilities of his familiar. The last but not least is another third-party D&D supplement called Dweomercraft Familiars. This one is a huge tome that will really excite your imagination. It describes what familiars are typical for different D&D races and why, how familiars are obtained, different exotic types of familiars, outsiders, undead, constructs, elementals, ooze, vermin, and even humanoids. What I like is that it doesn't simply list the options, but also explains you why one would, for example, want an ooze familiar, and why one wouldn't want one. It tells you how to care for familiars of all types, how to make them useful, and even has diseases for familiars of all types. I think this is an excellent book that really deserves your attention. Sure, it might have been not very useful in D&D, but GURPS is where it shines. I'll link all these books in the description. And that's all for this video. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.